I've learned my lesson. I am never going to mouth off Mother Nature because she can win. Kevin, David, get y'all some of this. It's not easy to farm it. That's why you got to have that. So welcome to season three, Corn Warriors. What am I squinting for? Sunlight. We're getting a lot of sunlight. Now, if you can't be the best at it, don't do it. June 8th, it's kind of push come to shove. We're basically planting through some of the wet stuff, around a few things. I want everything to be perfect, and especially this year, it's not going to happen. Ain't that something? That's just two days. Well, my goal is to be a personal best. But our personal best is a world record. I like to have the ability to make it rain. I was asking them what spot they wanted to play and they were all fighting over the same spot so we're all up here to learn about markets <laughs> nobody laughed David where's, didn't laugh at that where's the pistols <laughs> the pistols <laughs> I first want to talk about the popularity contest on corn warriors who's winning Kevin yeah. fresh from the tile machine I bet you most of the women voted for him. <laughs> well, Kevin said he was glad to have the day off from tiling machines that Sean's been putting him through the ringer. She has been wearing me out. <laughs> slave driver. Slave. Absolutely slave driver. So, Brooks, we need to learn about you a little bit. Tell us what's, uh, what's going on in Indiana. Uh, currently, we're uh, harvesting watermelons. We're about a little halfway through season, so... Hey, do those watermelons run through a combine? <laughs> not quite. They probably would, but... <laughs> well, David, you're not alone. Aren't you running cucumbers through a combine? We're making relish. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, you're kind of quiet down there. What's been going on in your world? Harvest all done? Uh, I think the people with mass and USDA need to learn how to grow corn. We may have acres there, but we have not finished. And for them to do a projection like they have, Somebody's bumped their head, in my opinion. But they don't listen to me. So don't mark it based off of rent. As long as you got David's money, you, you're comfortable either way. <laughs> Matt, how's things in your world? Well, uh, considering I planted two and a half acres before June 4th, uh, it could be better plant date wise. I think we'll make it, you know, I've. If I didn't know it was planted in June, and I just went out and looked at it, I would tell you it's, it looks as good or better as it ever had. Dan, how's things looking? Oh, I guess we'd mirror Matt here a little bit. Everything went in really late. We had a little bit. We got in May. Looks okay. There was, there was a fair amount of corn that got in in April. Uh, I planted beans, and those beans, they look really good. I did not plant any corn then. Our forecast was horrible. But turns out uh, that's some of the best corn. Um, a lot of late planted corn, kind of the same thing, just hoping it'll finish. Uh, I'll have to agree, some of it looks pretty good. It's just uh, whether we got time. Dave. <laughs> barley, the next generation. Anybody, everybody knows who Barley is, especially the girls. Ask David, tell that story about what you did and tell us what you saw. Last winter I said, hey Barley, let's try to figure out something to help the farm generate some revenue. So he came up with two ideas. One was the cucumbers, and the other was corn behind corn. So talked with the seed industry, and we went with a 76-day Pioneer hybrid. Not a clue about it, but we were focused on emergence and then disease protection. That 76-day hybrid, we harvested it in July. Not as early, we were hoping to shell it around the 4th of July, but it came off about two weeks later. 
averaged 186 bushel. The dry land went 140 to 200. The irrigated was up into the 270s. 76 day hybrid, not grown, not known for the East Coast. And man, if y'all get pushed, don't hesitate to go shorter season. Go so let's think season. about let's think about this for a second. You know, the irrigated made up to 270. If he double crops corn behind it, which he did, you planted a what, 100 day? Planted a 99 day behind it. If he makes 150 to 200 bushels on that, when you add the two together, this morning he's gonna make nine out of 10 years on that single acre. Kevin, um, these two guys are the reason why USDA is correct. Yeah. <laughs> Third fall. Can I drop the mic? Yeah. yeah. How about you guys over here? Anybody switch hybrids, lower down your season? Matt, you doing any intercropping this year? Well, normally we would be. We actually put um, wheat in that field thinking it would be a cover crop, and then we, we would go into the strips because we're all non-GMO. The, the biggest thing we struggle with on the strip uh, intercropping is, is weeds because of the, of the non-GMO portion of it. But the way this year was, my wheat was going to be a cover crop and then it was going to get killed just so we get something planted and then we end up cutting uh, wheat with a 42 uh, parts vomitoxin number so practically uh, radioactive this has been a super tough spring on us uh oh dead or in the door now said that we seen a big cloud coming over and I said, Mother Nature, you are not going to beat us. We are going to plant that. Well, it started raining and I said, well, we're going to see who's more hard-headed, me or you, Mother Nature. Well, she won. I've learned my lesson. I am never going to mouth off Mother Nature because she can win. For over 65 years, Brandt has been helping growers achieve better results. We bring the very best plant health and fertilizer solutions to the farm. Through research and innovation, we help growers implement new practices that improve the quality and abundance of food, fuel, and fiber around the world. Brant, professional agriculture. Visit brant.co for more information. Growers that are getting involved with the program, one of the first things I'll hear is, farming has never been more fun. Now I just can't wait until the next week where I'm gonna pull another plant tissue test and start to see what's going on with my nutrient levels. We're trying to do things that benefit the farmer first. We're trying to put some power back in their hands. Their data is valuable and how they can be a better steward of their data and make higher yields. It was fun to go in and make people think, make people think differently. But what was even more fun was that when you see the light bulbs go off. Let's see, I was in, where was I last week? Iowa, at one of the next level meetings. And then all of a sudden my phone, I get a text. And it said, Randy Dowdy. And it was a video of him shelling corn. Yield monitor started out in the low 400s and goes on up, upper 400s. And then I get a response, that's just production corn. So I don't feel so good about myself anymore. <laughs> But I do have a surprise for you, Randy. Can you bear with me one second there, Mike? Uh -oh. So y'all, I hadn't even pulled these back. This came off one plant. So here's one, I'll let Randy shell it back. And then here's a second ear on that same plant. I'll let Kevin shell that one back. You sure you're not gonna be embarrassed by me doing this? I, it, don't, it don't matter. <laughs> You know, they talk about the struggles y'all had in, in this spring. I couldn't have had any better spring, y'all. Corn was coming up in five, six, seven days from the day we planted it. And things were just looking well. And then, then things turned south. You know, we got a little bit of dry weather, no rain. So we were making a lot of sunlight and just irrigated corn. You know, we don't know what it's going to be like, but we don't think it's going to be too bad. I don't know. So what do we got here? 18 by 41. 16 by 22. 16 by 22. That's over a thousand kernels. Well over a thousand kernels. Wow. Look how heavy they are. 
It's going to be good. Now, since you got your little surprise, oh boy. I'm going to ask him a good question. What did you do in specificity, with specificity, to make that? Every detail. <laughs> yeah. Um, I followed the next level program. That's what I'm talking about. The, the next question I have uh, here he wants to know who farms the heaviest ground and how much different do they fertilize the heavier ground versus some lighter soil? And the heavier ground meaning uh, 25 CECs or greater. I'm four to seven. Yeah, I'm, hydrop yeah. I'm hydroponics, okay? I mean, we're probably, I mean, we're not over 25, not even close. Uh, the highest we've got anywhere is probably one, one zone at 22. Kevin, what's one thing that you look at on your tissue test that makes you have a bad day? What's the first thing you see that you're saying, oh, my gosh? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> probably the thing that, and, that I don't grasp on uh, my tissue samples is uh, my magnesium, too, but mine's low. You know, Randy, I don't know if that was three years ago, was telling him I couldn't move magnesium trouble, and he gave me a product, brand product, magnesium nitrate. It did move it. Uh, up, but the problem is I had to apply it several times in large quantities, which I will say it was the only thing to move my magnesium that I've ever tried. So um, probably my magnesium levels. I got a commercial about the, uh, the yellow gold. That's where you're going to see the most in-depth educational uh, information is on yellow gold. There's no reason not to sign up because it's free. And you're also going to see the episodes of season three first on yellow gold so be sure to sign up for that i'm also thankful for the sponsors that uh, help us to bring these guys in to talk to you today and i'm thankful for you guys i think you're driving a lot of the discussions that are going on in farm country i appreciate you guys opening up and sharing what you know and that's at all levels so from all everybody out there thank you for doing that This is our neighbor's ground down here, and they're tiled really well, and you can see all their ground is planted. You know, the river got it two or three times, but they were actually able to come back in and plant it because of tile. Where you can see ours sitting over here, we couldn't plant it because we laid wet, so tiling pays in our area. <laughs> we know it's really high productive ground. Oh, it's probably been 60 years since it's been tiled. I remember Grandpa and them saying this field took them like three or four years of tiling three months at a time by hand. This is part of our prevent planted acres. Uh, knowing that I got help for the weekend, the kids, we just decided to eliminate this wet hole and tile it. And our tile plow that we have will drive around and it will do the survey in for us. It's all run off of uh, RTK actually. He goes in on his monitor and marks it to where it will record his path. So if we have trouble with it later on, have to tear something up, he knows exactly where it's at. You can type in what kind of slope, your minimum depth and your maximum depth, and it does all the calculating for you. This is our main, so we're laying our laterals now. When we pull this main in, we had to use two tractors, red tractors to pull. And the only reason we had we had to use two red tractors is because we didn't have four green ones to do what them two red ones could do. 28 is what we normally set our minimum depth on. So now Sean's up there putting an end cap in, and then we'll move to the next line. Yeah, they, they like to gripe about it, but they'll remember these memories forever. I know I do. We were on the opposite side of the highway and pulled off some ears of corn there yesterday, and they're nice and long. I cannot, I mean, they look good. But I was sitting in the truck and Kevin threw me the ears and from here all the way down to here. We've been corn on corn on corn on crossroads for so many years. This year at crossroads, 
after we get the corn out, we're going to put beans in it. So hopefully that might be a game changer. Hopefully we can get the last two in before it rains. It's coming in faster than what we think. They hit fast. Spin it. This is this. Hey, Kevin, you got. Hey, Kevin, stop! You got a hydraulic problem. Stop! Hey, your hydraulic tank. Well, that's out of the cylinder. Well, I might as well get it out of the hole. So is that yeah, something we, that's that we probably can... it. So we're done. So we're done. So you want me to go ahead and, and string the saw back Roll up? Roll it back up, just... yeah. Hey, kiddos, let's go. So this is kind of the reminiscence of the flood here. That's David Hula type corn. Where we're at, I wouldn't be afraid to say this is 350 bushel corn right through here. We drove up to Hefty's, uh, Princeton, Illinois, which is about a five, five and a half hour drive. We probably talked to 30 to 40 growers in the corn belt. There ain't hardly any corn out there. Everything's replant or prevent or went to beans. Just because it's planted don't mean it's gonna, gonna make it what they say. We're probably a good month away yet from us harvesting yet. These creek bottoms down here, one, they drain naturally by themselves better than our river bottoms or most other ground. And number two, they're tiled on 15 foot centers. And the water gets away here tremendously quick. There's no way guys that without tile and, and this and that are able to do that because of all the leaching that they're gonna have. You know, tile does save leaching. Underneath the tile there, you know, that ground's drier quicker, so your nutrients can stick to the soil quicker. But the problem with trying to increase your yields, most people try to do it with the easiest thing, with nitrogen. And it goes back to the old bucket rule. You throw everything in the bucket, whatever your limiting factor is, is always your lowest nutrient. Instead of putting an extra 20, 30 pounds of nitrogen out there, save that money and put it on boron or zinc or manganese because 95 percent of the people put enough nitrogen out there to grow 300 bushel corn it's the other nutrients that they're lacking on well, how to combat lower prices is to grow more bushels so they got some aphids starting here and on the aphids my opinion on them we had them bad back in 2013 but it was only specific hybrids so I think it's all about the sugar content that's being extruded in that corn plant. I'm not saying we gave up on the corn crop, but I mean, there's only so much that management can make up. Do I expect the yields what we had last year? No, but you know, June 1st, when we come out, that we was hoping we'd grow 300 bushel corn, and I think we can do that again. In fact, I'm pretty sure we got it. calculator to see if that corn's gonna finish or not. It's Wednesday, August 14th, day after the hefty field day. I think that we're fine. I haven't got the last set of tissue tests back, but the ear set is tremendous. Uh, as good as it's ever been. Most of the rest of it I haven't even had time to walk out in. So we'll find out. We'll either be real surprised or real disappointed. field we're about to walk into was planted June 9th. Uh, we're at 1650 GDUs on this. It's a uh, 114 day hybrid. We'll walk in. I haven't even been in this corn since I side dressed it and that was weeks ago. This hybrid the emergence wasn't super even because you've got variability on where the top ear is at. You see it's still pollinating or is getting real close to being done. So right through here, we've got some really good even emergence. All things considered, this is probably some of the better looking corn I have. I didn't even know this was out here. So you're about 38,000, you figure 17 by mid 30s. Take that most days of the week. Looks a lot better than it did last year, I can tell you that for sure. Yeah. And this is one of the wettest spots in the field. So we've planted more population in here to take advantage of the extra water. 
I mean, we can see that we've started to push brace roots out. I didn't bring a spade or a pocket knife with me. Uh, yeah, I can let you use a spade. I have to go buy another one. You got a pocket, pocket knife, knife on you? Do you want a pocket knife? Yeah, let's come here. Here you can see evidence of the, of the windstorm we had earlier in the season. Not exactly what I'd like to see root wise, but I definitely had worse. I don't know, I bet if we called Cobb, he knows the cyber better than I do, he would tell you. I think he has told me in the past not to worry about the kernel count so much on this one. Yeah, Jake. I've got the soluble ordered, and it'll be in here um, about 11 o'clock tomorrow. Okay, did you, so, did you do a half pound or a pound on that? A half pound. Okay, I think that'll be enough. All things considered, we did a pretty good job, like I said, being what it is. Non-GMO, corn on corn, no-till. Well, I would expect this to be the bad stuff. After being in here, I'm not sure that it's the bad stuff by a long shot. Honestly, I didn't think it would look like that when I walked out there. So. Very pleasantly surprised. How it's going to end up or if it's going to finish is kind of the big question right now. I mean, the potential is certainly there. Sorry, my dad is distracting me right now. Sounds like I have to move something somewhere that I don't really want to move it. He said they can't put them in, so. Awesome, great. Nothing's working oh, every that's... time the camera What a coincidence. Through. Everything goes to hell. Two things of bad news in the last five minutes. And it's only 10 o'clock. Yeah, we're not even at dinner time yet. And you wonder why I don't answer your phone calls. <laughs> This is it. 60% of that corn looked like when it was with this giant bow in it, except it was all flat. Because this corn was the furthest along we had, and it was also the tallest, but you can see how twisted up it is. It got tall, but it didn't have the brace roots down yet, and we got that wind, and it just flattened it. I called Cobb, and I said, what do I do? Because I've never had this happen before. And he gave me some ideas, and we used them, and there's a good chance I'm going to owe Kevin Cobb beer for a year, but I'll probably be able to pay for it, I would guess. But that's all blisters. Must have run out of pollen on the on its own. We're probably gonna have a couple months here where it's gonna be depressed while we wait for the harvest results to come out. With what I think our production will be, we're probably 60 to 70 percent sold. And uh, I don't think we're gonna fill everything this fall. We probably won't have enough grain uh, to do so anyway, so. This is an aggregate number, 6267. On that stock, you've got one, two, three on this node here. I don't know if I've ever seen three ear shoots out of one node. And this is 102 day corn. I mean, this is, that's what's crazy about it. I mean, in, a, in the right year, this corn will yield with anything else I've got. I don't know, I guess we need to plant more of this hybrid. It just makes me real, real nervous to plant 102 day corn. I told you last year you should plant more of it. I've been talking about it for three years. <laughs> The amount of ears that it's put on is kind of mind-blowing. Well, I mean, this is the basic concept of the uh, strip intercropping, right? Is to put more sun on it. You're basically trying to take this effect and do it over and over again over the field. I mean, but if a guy needs a visual, that's what it is. Take your outside row of your field and then just imagine doing that 25 times across your field. We were on stage yesterday. David brought to two like a full size ear and a half, like a legit half size ear from the same plant. I mean, I assume David's not sandbagging. He said it, he said last night it was as good as it's ever, he's ever seen it. I was wrong. You take 1,084. <laughs> Remember what I said about sweating? He's still sweating.